Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming back to another episode of our podcast, A While Back. Today is unique because it's one of the first. Besides myself, one of the four siblings from the, our family, we also have my sister, Brenda, who's the first one to come on camera. And Brenda, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. So does Dad, because you're a very important part of exactly. our family, of course, but also this podcast today, because today's podcast is all about Brenda. Brenda's going to answer some questions, nothing out of the ordinary because she doesn't feel comfortable right now, but we're going to make sure we slowly but surely make her feel more comfortable on camera. But today's episode is titled Driven by Faith. The reason I have it titled Driven by Faith is because Brenda is, as I had stated once before, one of the most religious people I know. Um, she has a ton of faith. A ton of her decisions are guided by her faith. Is that correct? Okay, Does that sound that fair? Is. So yes. we're going to title this Driven by Faith, and Brenda's going to answer some questions for us. And a lot of decisions she's made in life have been driven by her faith. So let's get started. Okay. So today, Brenda, go on and introduce yourself, please. My name is Brenda. Uh, I have three sons, Jarrett, who's married to Mahogany, Jacob, and Justin, who are behind the camera. All right, good. And I work at a school i'm a receptionist at a school at a local private school yes all right Catholic good school. outstanding good yes. all right that's for one of the parishes here in town so yeah how do you enjoy that i love it you love I being love around it. those kids i love the kids okay yeah. good. i all love right. the parents too but I, right. I i love the kids and if you don't love the kids then, then you're in the wrong line of work. <laughs> absolutely right. Right. okay good so yeah. now the very first question i'm going to ask you is is very simple and easy Right off the bat, you've heard all the episodes, you've seen all the episodes and you've heard all the interaction between myself and dad and grandma when she's with us as well. Yes. Is there anything that you've heard on any of the episodes that you had not heard before? Anything in particular that kind of took you by surprise? Uh, yeah, well, there's always something uh, new to learn uh, about your parents' right. uh, upbringing. Uh, so yes, that was well, one of the important, one of the things that I learned that I didn't realize to begin with was the fact that, um, when dad was growing up, you know, they had so much manual labor that I had no idea to what scale it was until he started describing it right. in episode one. And I thought that was just, to me, everything is so automated in this day and age. It's hard to realize that there were young kids out there just literally picking cotton by the hand. So I, I was kind of shocked by that. Was there anything that shook you well, as no, well, surprised you're, you? You're right. I mean, me too. Right. Um, as far as the amount of chores that they had, and they had to help their parents be parents when, you know, they weren't able to uh, supervise and watch the kids. They, the older ones, had to step up to the plate yeah. and help. Uh, thank God, you know, we didn't have to do that. No. I'd probably kill my siblings yeah, in a true. nice way, in a nice way. I, I'm but sure yeah. that would have been the case. Yeah. But there was such a big age group, and as far as the age gap between Uncle Adolf all the way yes, down, yes, so I can understand yes. how that had to yeah. be, in their family, had to, had to yeah. be 100% done no matter what. But second question. So tell us what it was like growing as, up as the only girl in our family. You know, a lot of people think, that it was easy, that it was a walk in the park, that I was a spoiled little girl, yeah, but I can promise yeah. you I was no, not. You, no, you were. By far like, not. No, go on, you were. <laughs> I was not. Okay, granted, I had my own room, and I didn't have to share it. I had yeah. my own clothes. I didn't have hand-me-downs. Right. Okay, yes. But, you know, growing up with three brothers was not fun at all. Not fun at all. Uh, we... We fought a lot when mom and dad weren't around. Uh, when mom and dad were around, there was no, my brothers could not uh, physically, like physically we couldn't hit each other or anything. But when mom and dad weren't around, of course, you know, fists went flying. And that was for all of us, me included, of course. So, uh, but I wouldn't have traded it for the world. We had a lot of fun. I do remember getting hit by you a lot, yes, so. <laughs> Now, since you were the only girl, you were allowed to get away with a lot. I know you ah. don't know. You got away with a lot. Um, Probably I think, did. <laughs> exactly. If anybody would know, he would know. Oh, yeah. 
She was Mama's girl. Oh, she I know. Mama defended Brenda big time. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt about that. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. <laughs> but of course, I did too. So oh, yeah, I know you did. Both of us. Okay, if, now I remember getting Dad into trouble a lot with Mom. Yes, exactly. When, yeah. when there were times when, when we were when we asked Mom if we could do something, and Mom was like, "No, you can't. You, you know, you can't go for obvious. You know, there were right. obvious reasons." And so then we would go ask dad who wasn't anywhere around who didn't know what was going on so we'd go ask dad and dad would say well what did your mom say well mom said we could go okay well then i guess you can go and then we'd go back inside and i remember this one time i was packing my clothes i think i had planned to go stay at a friend's house and so i was packing my clothes and my mom mom asked she said what are you doing i said well i'm going to so-and-so's house and she was like i told you you couldn't go and i said but dad said i could and she was like dad she yells in the back from the back porch dad come here yeah i remember he did in trouble quite a bit and yeah. then she questioned him about right. it and he said well they she said you told her she could go well no i didn't tell her i asked her what you said and she told me you said yes so anyway yeah I mean, it was, there was nothing that you ever had to do around the place. You never lifted a finger, no. but you so would do stuff life. in the house. No, right. I had I had to cook, and it's a chore. I still okay. hate it to this day. So she did say a lot of untruths. That <laughs> exactly. There was a lot of untruths exactly. going on. Exactly, exactly. So for for you, I have three brothers. What are you? Well, I know. So God. see, this is where I the other question that. comes in. Then, so for instance, in school, um, yeah. from elementary school all the way into high school, what was it like? Because you and I both know that it wasn't easy being our sister, mine and Brian's at the time, because Stephen was below you as far as age go. What was it like being our sister growing up? Because, you know, you were one of those people that had to listen to a lot of stuff because you also had to put up with dealing with people that would make fun of the last name and those kind of things. Yeah. So what was it like having to deal with other people that would say something about me or about Brian? How would you deal with those kind of situations? You know, and I, I, I think I speak for a lot of families who are close. Mm-hmm. It's it's one thing for a family member to pick on another family member, right? Because you mean that more jokingly than mm-hmm. you do. I mean, because you love each other, and you mean that more or less jokingly right. than someone else. But someone else saying it, it's like, how dare you say that about my family member? You know. So, yeah. I mean, there was no. It was nothing ugly about it, but it was, you know, standing up and basically saying, that's my family. You know, Absolutely. Don't talk about my right. family that right. way. Right. And you that's know, the you same thing. My family. Right. That's the same thing that, like, it was for me and Brian. If somebody ever said something about you, yeah. we definitely made sure they were yeah. put in their place. Yeah. And those are the kind of things that happen with siblings, especially because we were so age wise within three years of each other. Yeah. Literally, there was me, 68, there was Brian, 69, and then you were 70. 71. 71. Okay, so we were all literally right there next to yeah. each other. Yeah, and then Stephen was. And then Stephen was later Stephen. on after that, yeah. 73 or 74. I yes. can't remember which one. Uh, so if that's the case, you know that we had a lot of interaction with friends right. that knew each other. Because I knew a bunch of your friends. You knew all of my friends yeah. and all of Brian's friends. And it was a it was a lot of fun. It was a good time. But there was times, of course, where we had to defend uh, what somebody may have been saying about a sibling. Right. And those right. weren't fun times. Right. But this times that a lot of siblings have to deal with right. with people that they're all so. close to. Right. All right. So what's the craziest thing that ever happened to you unrelated to your children? Anything that you can, because I have a very specific one that I remember. He's going to remember. remember one. Too. So tell me what was <laughs> one of the craziest things that ever happened to you, whether we're talking about high school or after. Craziest thing. Yeah. I don't know. Was that when I wrecked my car? Well, when you wrecked your car out of a 10 foot ditch, yeah, Yeah, that's one. I fell out of the pickup. And that too. Oh, wait, I fell out of a pickup twice. 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 Oh my God. I just knew about one time. Oh, really? 10? Might have been? I don't know. Might have been about 10 years old. I fell out of the back of Grandpa's pickup. Right. I don't tell you. Right. Yeah, over there in China. And then Brian's, Brian's was in high school. Right. I fell out of that. I was inside the. And what about your incredible driving coming down the road? And going into the <laughs> okay, don't ever drive with flip flops on and slide them underneath your seat because when you're trying to brake, they do slide up underneath your brake to where you can't stop. Yeah. yeah. 
And anyway, so to try and overcorrect, I was headed toward the deep ditch and so to try and overcorrect it, I really overcorrected and, you know, hit a culvert at a, like a 90 degree angle. Oh yeah. And he yeah. remembers that. I know oh, he yeah. was really and happy about that. And we didn't have that. cell phones at that time. Yeah. He was really happy and about I still, that. What do you remember? And about? I still remember, and I still wonder whether it was flip flops or it was, it was, <laughs> it was just carelessness. One of the two. And I know when I came over there. The car was turned over against right. the high embankment like this. Yes, I remember. Sideways. Too. And we had to flip the car back over and And you know, God bring it I on home. Tell you God put some guardian angels there at the right time because I couldn't open my door and I'm thinking, how am I gonna crawl out of here? So I crawled out through the window uh -huh. and uh, lo and behold, there happened to be this, you know, this but, couple driving by and so they stopped and they took me back home and that's then, right. You know. That was outstanding. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah. good thing about it was that she didn't get hurt. That was, oh, that was the most, that was the most right, important part. Right. So, the car could always be repaired, but she didn't get hurt. But when you saw that car, you were oh, not happy. Oh, no, I wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you had four cars or five cars to take care of. That's right. Grandpa you seen one on the side, happy. you couldn't be that happy. So... <laughs> So now, but you know, you think it's a dream. <laughs> it happens, and then you wake up the next morning and think, "Did I really do that?" Well, no, we knew it wasn't a dream. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Yeah. So tell us about some of the highlights in your life that don't relate to your children. So, for instance, and it could be from high school on up. What specifically just stands out as one of the highlights in your life that you'll never forget? And I know raising the boys, the boys being born, that kind of thing. But is there anything in particular that stands out in your life that you see as a highlight? I see as a highlight. Yeah. Like for me, there's a, I can tell you almost every fishing trip, every hunting trip I've been on, those kind of things. So what do you so remember that would be kids? a highlight? Yeah, they didn't involve kids. There's yeah, plenty of them with kids, but okay. what in particular? Yeah, trip. Too. Highlight was going to mom. There you go. Right, right. Perfect. Okay, yeah. good. So tell us about that. Well, I got the opportunity to go up to Rome and stay in a convent. Um, Felt like home for there. you? Yeah, I tell you, it was so cool. <laughs> it really was. Uh, the floor that I stayed on, uh, three saints had roamed that floor. And, wow. Uh, yeah, I tell you, that was big for me. I mean, seeing the Pope was big too, but <laughs> I have to admit, the highlight was that convent where really? the Dang three the saints have from the floors. Um, that is impressive. All right. In that convent. That, that was just something to me. I, I love reading that's stories great. about the saints. That's good. And didn't you right. say there was one bishop you had met over there that you saw not long ago on YouTube or something? On news or something? Oh. Well, one of the bishops that you had met over there in Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Was it a bishop or a cardinal? Or a cardinal or whatever. No, there was a cardinal. That was a cardinal. Was, okay. Was, so, so now this one is something that you're going to have to, you don't have to go into great detail because we know each individual boys have different personalities, but what was it like raising all three boys at one time? I know it wasn't easy. God knows it wasn't easy. Grandpa and grandma helped out a lot oh, when you needed God. them. And yes. you know, Marty and I, whoever it was, the siblings, we all tried to help too, because it's a lot when you have three young boys and you raise it all the way through high school, college. Yeah. Now into a marriage with Jared, the oldest one. And you're still raising him. And you're still raising him. Okay, <laughs> great. So tell us a little bit about what it was like raising those three. It's very difficult. It's not like it can't be done. It's a lot of hard work involved. It's not you. It's your children. That's right. It's their future. It's theirs. You had your chance, so now it's basically their time. Right. Um, and without... Truthfully, without family, I don't know how I would have done it. Family and faith, uh, that got me through and still pulling me through. And I can remember some good advice that I got from my parents was, Brenda, don't treat all the kids the same because they're not all the same. They're all each individually different. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they were little, I used to dress them alike. I used to, you know, when one wanted something, then they all got the same thing. I mean, it's not... That's where I learned uh, as time went on. You're right; they are each individually different, so Absolutely. you have to treat different them different personalities. So, so that's one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
bleep. <laughs> take a bleep. <laughs> oh my God. Now, now, the other thing I was going to yeah, ask you about. Bleep, I don't care. It was funny. <laughs> now, the other thing that I was going to tell you about. When we did Jared's episode, Jared did comment about how you were an extremely important guiding person in his life because of what you did. And what you did for all three of them was you kept them on a straight and narrow. You did not allow them to veer off course with any bad friends, doing anything stupid and ridiculous. And you did instill in them an incredible amount of faith. So did you want to speak to that as well and how difficult that well, may or that have been? Could've, that could have happened so easily. Absolutely. And Absolutely. It, and it still, in a sense, can happen in your workplaces too. That's why I love where I work. Right. Um, I love the people. I love the kids. Um, but you really have to watch who you hang around with them because uh, that determines, you know, your friends determine what kind of person you're going to turn out to be. Um, they true friends are, yeah. are there for you. They have your back a hundred percent. Well, you're 100% many, correct. But there were many times uh, the boys could have steered wrong. Absolutely. And, and because of the fact that you kept thank, them. And thank God, like I said again, <laughs> My family and my faith, because I wouldn't have been able to do it, you know, without the help. Trust Absolutely. me, everybody needs help. And the, the important part was that you kept them on the straight and narrow, and you made sure that they had a great amount of faith instilled in them, so that way, going on, it carries them through to be successful later on in life. Well, according to according to him, when the kids were younger, he would always tell the he would always tell the boys, including his sons as well, mm -hmm. don't tell. Your don't tell your mom or your aunt Marty because they'll kill all the fun and bury it in the backyard. <laughs> well, that was true. I mean, I don't think they'll disagree with that. They know that's the case. Uh, so now the boys, the boys are all grown up now. They're successful, healthy. Jerry's Jared's married. So what is it like because of the fact that now you're going to be coming an empty nester? I'm assuming pretty quick. What is it like starting to live your second half of your life where it's all going to be about you rather than about your children. I mean, it's weird. Is it weird? Is it, is it difficult weird. now? It's weird. Really? Um, I'm not a grandma yet, but God willing, when it's the right time, I will be. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's a weird feeling. I mean, I never thought I'd be as old as I am now. Mm -hmm. You know, time flies quickly. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, you are pretty old. I mean, if you were as young as I was, you'd be a different story, Shut but you're not. So, okay, that has to be edited. <laughs> you're so tell, tell, say that. tell us about how much your faith means to you, and how does your faith guide you in the decisions that you make in everyday life? Uh, how does faith guide me? Yeah. Um, well, I'll be honest with you. Monday through Friday, my day starts off, like, starts off at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I do say my prayers. Uh, I allow an hour's time of pr prayer. I know, I know that's a lot, but truthfully, um, <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> truthfully, um, if I didn't have that, uh, I don't think uh, that I, I don't, I'd be where I am now. Right. I, I'm happy where I am. Absolutely. And I think my children are happy where they are. And that's all that really matters. Isn't that correct? Right, right. We're, exactly. in, a good, we're in a good place. All yeah. right, good. So now, how does it feel to have an expanded family? Because now you have a daughter-in-law in the family. Yeah. Possibly there'll be a grandchild yeah. coming down the pipeline somewhere. So how does that feel to you as a mom, knowing that you've done your job and now everything's starting to fall into place and you're reaping the rewards? Well, I'm done well, I feel like I'm sort of done uh -huh. to some degree with the oldest. And it is. It's a weird feeling saying I have a daughter-in-law because, you know, right. that's, that's something new to get used I'll to. I'll bet it like is, yeah. Grandkids, you know, yeah. same thing. So, but uh, we love her to death. She fits well in the family. Oh, she does. Absolutely. I'm very well, blessed well, to well, have her. Yes. Uh, so. Yeah, she, she's a phenomenal young lady. So, Are you looking forward to be a grandma anytime soon? <laughs> Because remember, <laughs> you will be the first grandma or grandpa among the siblings. So are you looking forward to being a grandma? Bring it on. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you are looking forward to being a grandma? Sure. Why oh. not? Okay, good. Well, are you going to spoil it's your... A, it's a fact of life, you know? It is. Right. So, 
So are you going to spoil your grandchild as much as you were spoiled? <laughs> no, I don't know about that. <laughs> Now, mom and dad uh, I had to put that in. A lot. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're gonna be winding. Put that in my knees, I will. <laughs> okay. Well, good. So we're gonna be winding this down here shortly. But tell us about your future plans. What do you want to do within the next five or six years, when all that you have is just a grandchild or two, and you can do whatever you want to do? What would you love to do in that? Once you get free and clear of everything. What would I like to yeah. do? Yeah, what would you love to do? I don't know. I Travel? Don't, you, I can't, that you can't Travel, retire. Probably. You can't retire in Hawaii and move away because you got to stay here and take care of me and mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. I forgot about that. You're going to be watching them now. <laughs> Talking stuff. about that. If we don't <laughs> exactly. answer that phone when she calls twice, she's oh, trying she's to come out oh, to look for man. us. So, that's yeah, right. that's why I brought that up. <laughs> so, parents out there, please answer your phone when your children call. <laughs> Well, he does have a history of making bad decisions around mechanical things. So, what else would you like to do when you finally have all the time that's just for you? Probably, like you said, travel. Travel? Yeah. travel. To Rome? Where else? Where Anywhere else? else? And, and no specifics. Wherever okay, good. God opens up that door. I mean, I'm ready to... Go no matter what? That's right. All right, yeah. good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's that's outstanding. That's exactly what everybody should have. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, but I'm, I was just going to say towards the very end that, you know, you've raised three outstanding young men. You've done an incredible job of it on your own. Thank you. You have yeah. kept them on the right path, and you have instilled faith in them. I hope so. And that is extremely hard to do as a single Mom. It, is. it, it is. is. It's not easy. It's not. And I know it, it wasn't easy. No. And it still isn't. But right. it's easier as time goes on. That's correct. And they get older. and They start making decisions on their own. Yes. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And, and the, the little things maybe we've said before in the past, when we didn't think that they were listening, mm -hmm. uh, they really are listening. Yeah. Because Jared yeah. even said that on his episode. Yeah. So, good. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. So is there anything else that you want to say? Mm -hmm. No. Grandpa? Uh, well, I just want to say mom and I are extremely proud of you. Well, and not you. only of you, but of all the siblings and all the grandchildren. And we're just proud of everyone. Absolutely. I'm just proud of the fact that right. you did everything on your own. I mean, it could have been extremely difficult, the situation that you were in, yeah. with three of them at that age. Yeah. But you held your ground. You did a great job. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and when they misbehaved at school, I was there. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you should have done. Yeah. You can ask Jacob about an episode. <laughs> we don't have to go to Jacob's episode. So, what else did you want to say? Anything else that you want to no, talk about? No, I think I thank God. I truly thank God for my family uh, and for my friends because without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. So, All right, outstanding, great. And God bless me with a wonderful family. Absolutely. So, all right, Dad. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> Let me tell you something else. <laughs> 